Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefine Horizons and On Point Workshops. I'm going to record a video or, or two, a couple videos maybe, on how to prepare for meetings at work. Uh, the specific type of meeting we're going to talk about in this video or a couple videos is what I call status update meetings. So I'll explain what those are in a minute. I have a couple of those meetings a week. Usually I try to do that. And one of my frustrations as a boss is uh, sometimes, <clears throat> not all the time, but occasionally, I am at the table with a handful of my employees. We're having a status update meeting. And I am frustrated at uh, the way uh, my folks are not prepared for those meetings and the way we kind of struggle to get through uh, get through the meeting with a with, uh, a good idea of what people are working on and what they need from me. Now, one of the things I always try and do as a boss, and, and I don't do this perfectly, but I work on it, is I try and ask myself, if I'm not happy with something that's happening in my shop, I try and ask myself, what do I need to do to improve that situation? Because I have good people working for me. So usually, if something's not going well, it's not their failure, it's typically mine. And so. I realized when I thought about these meetings that I've never trained my people to prepare for and speak articulately at meetings. So I need to fix that. I feel really bad now in hindsight because I probably expressed some of this frustration to them and I haven't prepared them. I haven't given them the training they need. And so I want to try and fix that with this with this video or, or a couple of videos. Um, and. I want to apologize to my folks. I was regularly given job duties that I was not properly trained for or prepared for when I was a young aspiring land surveyor, and that's not something I want to do to my people. So I don't think there's a, these videos are going to be very long, uh, but I hope after you watch them, you'll feel like you've been given a fighting chance uh, to sit down at the next kind of team meeting with your boss and sound uh, like you know what you're doing, sound, sound, sound intelligent and organized. That's the goal. So, what are we going to talk about in the in the videos? We're going to talk about five things. Number one, we're we'll just talk briefly about why is this important. Uh, number two, I'll explain to you what is a status update meeting. That's a specific kind of meeting that teams have. Uh, so, I'm not talking about preparing you for all kinds of meetings to, today. Just this type of meeting in particular. Although I think a lot of the principles will apply to any kind of meeting. I'm going to tell you how do you prepare for a status update meeting. There's some specific things you need to do. I think we're going to talk about five questions you need to become. You need, you need to go to the meeting prepared to ask five questions. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what you want not to say to your boss and what you do want to say to your boss in those meetings. So we're going to have some things not to say and some things to say. Um, and then I have a, a, an extra kind of bonus video where I actually give some examples of the bad, the bad thing to say or the wrong thing to say and what would be better to say. So I think that will also be helpful. Okay, so that's, that's what we're going to cover. So let's go ahead and talk briefly about why, why is this important. You know, why is it important if you are a young professional to be able to come to this kind of team meeting prepared, right? And these kinds of meetings are usually especially as a younger professional, they're usually internal. In other words, they're inside your organization. But as you get older and you develop more as a professional and take on more responsibility, you're going to find that you're, you're having these meetings with clients or with, uh, with external teams because um, this is also pretty typical for external teams. So it's a good skill to practice and to learn. So why do you want to be good at it? Well, it makes you look good at your job. Now, you notice I underlined the word look here. I did that on purpose. So you can be bad at your job, but look good at it. And you can be good at your job, but look bad at it. And you don't want to do either of those things, right? You want to be good at your job, and you also want to look good at your job. And that's one of the things I struggle with a little bit when I was younger is I've always tried to work hard and be good at my job, and I thought that was enough. And one of the things I had to learn, and I had some bosses that helped me was, it's not enough to be good at your job. You also have to look like you're good at your job, right? So, um, and you know, it's funny, when I was in college, my surveying professor, Dave, he used to say, um, 
You could be the best field crew, survey field crew in the company, but if you have horrible looking, messy field notes, people are gonna think you do a bad job. You could be a lazy, horrible field crew, and if you have the best notes, you know, the best looking, neatest, most organized notes in the company, people are gonna think you're a rock star. And so it's the same principle, I think that applies. So coming to meetings prepared is gonna make you look good at your job, whether you're good at your job or not. Uh, it's also gonna make meetings shorter, who doesn't love a short meeting, right? Uh, meetings are painful, generally. So make, if you're prepared and the other people on your team are prepared, the meeting will be shorter. Uh, it will also make your meetings less painful. What do I mean when I, when I say a, a, a less painful? Well, we've all been in a painful meeting, right? They're awkward, there's long pauses, people get uncomfortable, they're not prepared, the boss is irritated, right? So you can have a 10 minute meeting that's painful and seems like it takes forever and you can have an hour meeting that's productive and helpful and it, it can seem like it goes by in a flash. So the level of pain in a meeting matters. And then the other thing is it will help your boss. You know, if you come prepared to a meeting like this, a status update meeting, it's gonna help your boss. He or she is gonna appreciate that, right? Probably if you work at a surveying company or mapping company or, or, or organization, um, like a county or a city, uh, your boss probably has too much to do. They're probably stressed out most of the time and they've got a lot of things to keep track of. So this will help them, right? You wanna help your boss, right? It's like when people say happy wife, happy life. I have been married 20 years, right? That's true. You, you, want, you want within reasonable, within reason, you know, with reasonable effort, you wanna try and keep your wife happy. Uh, you wanna try and keep your boss happy, right? So this will help your boss. So those are the reasons why it's important. Okay, what are we gonna talk about next? We're gonna talk about uh, what is a status update meeting. And so uh, let me just, let me check my notes here real quick because I wanna make sure I don't miss anything on that. So status update meeting is a special type of meeting. Like I said, I have them uh, a couple times a week normally here at Redefine Horizons. And uh, it is a meeting designed to communicate the status of uh, projects or tasks, right, or some other logical unit of, of work. And usually what happens is, at least at my shop, is I'll go around the room and I just kind of check in with each, each team member that's in the meeting and ask them, you know, give me a status on what you're working on, you know, and it could be what are you working on this week or what are you working on today or we have one for, for what we call records of survey. So they're a special type of map that we have to file in California and most of my technical people get assigned different maps to do. So I'll go around the table and ask them, where are we at with the maps that you've been assigned? So that's a status update meeting. Um, there are a few uh, questions that you wanna be able to answer about each meeting. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. I wanna write those on the, on the whiteboard so, um, so you can see them and not just hear them because they're, they're important. So what are we not gonna talk about today in the videos? There are a few things that we're not gonna talk about. So. Uh, I'm not going to teach you in these videos how to design meetings. Uh, I'm not going to teach you how to hold meetings or run meetings. Um, and I'm not going to tell you how to prepare for other types of meetings. So there's other types of meetings. Uh, there's meetings to make decisions. There's group training. Um, there's meetings to convey critical information to, to your team. Not talking about any of those today. We're just, we'll do more videos on those, I hope. For today, we're just going to talk about status update meetings. So let me take a quick pause, and when I come back, we will uh, go over the five questions that you need to be prepared to answer for each item on an agenda that you've been assigned in a project status meeting. We'll go over those questions, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about how to, how to prepare. There are five questions that you need to be prepared to answer in a status update meeting. And you need to be ready to answer these five questions for each agenda item that is your responsibility, right? So those could be projects, tasks, or other logical units of work, okay? So you gotta be ready to answer these five questions, guys, for each of your, your items, okay? So not the first one, not the last one, not the one in the middle, all of them, if you want, if you want to look like, you, like you're competent, right? So. I wanted to write those questions down on the whiteboard because they're important and I want to make sure you get them all. Okay, so when you sit down for your status update meeting, here's what you got to be able to tell your boss during the meeting for each one of your agenda items. 
you got to tell your boss, first of all, what has been done since the last meeting. Usually these status update meetings are held on a regular basis, right? They're every week or every two weeks or every month. So what, what did you do since the last meeting? Number two, what are you currently working on right now? Number three, what are you going to do next? So when you're done with your current staff, your current task, What's coming up? What, what's the next thing in the process or in the workflow? Number four, and this is what I really care about as a boss, how long until you're done, right? Why do I care about that as your boss? I care because I typically need to convey that information to someone else, or I need to use that information to allocate resources to make sure that we hit deadlines for clients. And then finally, number five, you need to be able to tell your boss what help do you need? If you need help, or if you're hitting a roadblock, you got to be able to communicate that. Now, if you don't need help, it's fine. It's okay. But you need to be able, if you do need help, you need to speak up and you need to be able to communicate that. All right. So let's just use an example. Let's say we're having a status update meeting for our record of survey maps. And I've been assigned the record of survey for Yankee Hill. That's one of our projects. Okay. So let's just go through what I need to be able to say. So first question, what's been done since the last meeting? Boss, I sat down, took a couple hours, I reviewed the boundary line work drawing, the boundary anno drawing, and the boundary survey report for the project. All right, good. Two, what are you currently working on? Boss, right now I'm creating the sheet layout and working on the cover sheet. All right, good. Three, what task is next? Next, I'm gonna uh, complete the note sheet and run PDF prints for you to review, perfect. How long till you're done? Boss, I need another day and a half to finish that work. Great. What help do you need? Well, I already told you, boss, I'm going to need you to check my PDF prints make, and get me your, your review comments so I can get those addressed and prepare the submittal package. All right. Perfect. Does that make sense? Five questions. Doesn't take very long. You ought to be able to rattle through those, right? If you're well prepared, we're going to talk about that next. If you're well prepared, you shouldn't have to scratch your head for these answers, right? And if you don't have a great memory, that's okay. Write this stuff down. Write down the answers to these five questions in your meeting notes for each item that belongs to you on the agenda. Okay, so now that we've covered the five questions, let's talk a little bit briefly about how you prepare for this type of meeting, a status update meeting. Now I mentioned the main thing is to be ready to answer these five questions for each agenda item that belongs to you, right? Or, or that, that's been assigned to you. So that's the first thing you gotta do is figure out what is your responsibility at the meeting? Like what, what items do you need to talk about? Now that may sound easy. Sometimes it's a little bit complicated. It's not always clear who the task has been assigned to, right? Now, I, I try and do a good job to, of making sure those assignments are clear, but that doesn't always happen. And Bosses are going to not always be clear about that. So what I would tell you is if you're, if you're, let's say you've got a status update meeting tomorrow or next week and you're getting ready, if you're not sure if one of the items is your responsibility or not, ask your boss. Say, hey, I'm getting ready for the meeting. I know we talked about this project or this task a little bit uh, at our last meeting, but it wasn't clear to me if that was assigned to me or if it was assigned to Danny. Can you let me know so I can... You know, if it's my task, I want to make sure I follow up, I communicate with that, that with Danny and, and, we, and we figure out who's doing what. So that's the first step. Identify which items on the agenda or which projects you are going to be responsible for. Number two, review each one of your projects, right? Be ready to give specific answers to these five questions. Do not do this during the meeting. That drives me crazy and it probably drives your boss crazy too. Don't be flipping through your notes from two weeks ago trying to figure out the answers to these five questions, right? You're wasting everybody's time and it's super frustrating. So do this before the meeting, not during. Before you walk into the meeting, review your notes from the last meeting, right? If you take notes during the meeting and you should, like what was talked about, what tasks were you assigned, okay? And then the last thing, is make sure that you aren't a roadblock for somebody else on your team. You don't want that to come up in the meeting if you can avoid it, right? So, um, and we don't have a problem at my shop with people 
you know, we don't, we don't work at a place where people backstab because we don't tolerate that behavior. But, you know, you don't, you don't want you to put your coworker in a position where their roadblock, it, that you are their roadblock on a, on a project or task that they've been assigned. That's uncomfortable for them and it doesn't look good. So let me just give you an example. And I'm, and, and I'm not asking people to be perfect, but let's just say I'm working with Brian on a, uh, Brian's working on a project, but he needs something from me. Maybe he needs me, he needs some data from me. So let's say maybe he's working on an existing conditions exhibit and he's waiting on me for the UAV ortho photo. Let's just say I got busy, I dropped the ball. I don't have the ortho photo ready and our status update meeting is tomorrow. Okay, here's what you could do in that situation. You could, you could call or email or talk to Brian, message him and say, Brian, I know our status update meeting is tomorrow. I know you've been waiting for me on this UAV ortho photo. I dropped the ball, man. I got busy. I am scheduled tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock. I've taken three hours to make sure that I get this done for you. I wanted to let you know before the meeting tomorrow. All right, what does that do for Brian, for your coworker? Now in the status update meeting, you can say, everything is done except for placement of the UAV ortho photo in the background of the exhibit. Landon talked to me yesterday. He let me know that he's running behind schedule, but he's got he's got time carved out for, for today um, at two o'clock for the rest of the day. He's gonna make sure I, he gets that to me. I'll have it taken care of tomorrow. Perfect. That that tells the boss that, you, that even though you're behind, even though Landon's behind, right? Even though I'm behind, I'm holding up Brian, that you guys have talked about it and you are handling your mess, right? So that's the last thing. Make sure you're not anybody else's roadblock. And if you meet regularly with the, with the same team, which is pretty common, you can, you know, there's nothing wrong with just asking your uh, teammates before the meeting, like, hey, am I holding you up on anything? I, like, let me know, I wanna make sure I get that taken care of before we have our, our status update meeting this week, right? Don't do that the night before the meeting, it's 6 p.m., right? Uh, that's not helpful. Uh, give, your, give your coworkers a couple days lead time. But yeah, try and find out if you're holding them up on something and then, and then you can take care of it before, you know, everybody's gotta, spill the beans in front of the boss. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about next is the last two things. We're gonna talk about uh, what not to say to your boss during this kind of meeting, status update meeting, and what, what to say. So we're gonna look at the difference, we're gonna compare and contrast these two. There are some things you should say during a status update meeting or a way to say things, and there are some things you should avoid saying during a status update meeting. So we're gonna go through each category here and hopefully you'll be able to see the difference. We're gonna compare and contrast a little bit, all right? So we're gonna start with what you wanna do. So what, what do you wanna say during these kinds of meetings when it's your turn to speak? So the first thing is, you know, to the extent possible, be brief and concise. Don't mumble, don't say um, don't, you know, rifle through your disorganized pile of notes. So be brief and concise. Mostly, this is a result of being prepared for the meeting, right? So be prepared, that will help you to be brief and concise. You know, I don't want you to read me a dictionary or tell me your life story, typically during these meetings. So brief and concise. Number two, wait your turn. Your boss is probably not gonna forget you. Be patient. Um, if for some reason, you think you're getting near the end of the meeting and you haven't had a chance to speak, you could politely uh, ask your boss if you could have an opportunity to speak, but don't jump out of line. It's, a, it's an irritating childish habit, so just be patient, wait your turn. If you're at the table in a meeting, your boss probably knows you need to speak. <laughs> Number three, uh, mind your own business. Um, now, I almost put this down here in this other category and rephrase it as don't get in other people's business, but you want to mind your own business. Like, let me give you an example. Let's just say one of your coworkers is having their turn, they're talking about their projects, and they're behind schedule on something. You don't want to open your mouth and say something like, well, um, you know, Elena's behind because um, her CAD tech Nikki, every time I turn around, she's shooting the baloney with Brit, and that's why they can't get their work done on time. Okay. Couple reasons why that's a bad idea. Number one, uh, you're not helping out your, your coworker in that situation, right? They're gonna be upset with you. Number two, it's none of your business. That, is, that isn't your team. Um, let your coworker handle her own business. And 
Uh, number three, it's not the appropriate form for that kind of conversation. If you need to address that issue, you can do it with Elena in private, or if you absolutely must, you can do it with your boss in private, but don't do it in a meeting in front of everybody. Like that's, that's not cool, right? Not discreet. So mind your own business. If it's not your project or your team, keep your mouth shut. Right? It's pretty simple. Be amazed how many people forget that rule. Uh, number four, ask for a private follow-up conversation if needed. It's almost always a bad idea to talk negatively about a coworker in a, in a meeting like this. Now, I'm not saying there is never an appropriate time to do that. Sometimes people need to be called out on their bad behavior, but you got to be really, really careful about that. And I would only do that if I was directly asked by my boss and I knew he wanted, he or she wanted an honest answer to that question. And even then I would be cautious. So let me give you, let me, so in those situations, if you're in a situation where you have to, you need to talk to your boss or disclose information that would be embarrassing or awkward or negative, I always encourage people ask for a private follow-up, right? And if you've got a good boss that's running that meeting, they're going to know what the issue is, right? So let me give an example of how that might happen. So as a boss, I say, uh, Danny, you're, you're running way farther behind on that project than I thought. You know, I'm not happy about that. What's going on, man? Like, like, like this is the second or third time you've done that to me in, in the last few weeks. Why are you so far behind? Now, let's just say in that situation, Danny's behind uh, because somebody else on the team hasn't given him what he needs to do his work. What Danny could say in that situation is he could say, Landon, I know I'm behind and I have a plan to get back on schedule. But what I'd really like to do is ask if you and I could have a private conversation about that after this meeting is over. I think that would be more appropriate. Now, if I'm the boss running that meeting, when Danny says that to me, I'm going to know what's going on, right? I'm going to say, all right, yeah, no problem, Danny. Don't let me forget after the meeting, you and I will get together for a few minutes and we can talk about what's going on, right? So if you got a good boss, they're going to know, right? And then um, there, there's an appropriate venue for those conversations. Usually a group meeting is not the, the right place. So, you know, if, if, if you got to throw, <laughs> I don't want to say throw somebody under the bus, but if you have information that isn't flattering, or maybe you've got something personal going on in your life, you know, like, I don't know, maybe you just had a baby or you had a grandparent die or you got something going on. Like, you don't necessarily have to air that dirty laundry out in front of everybody, right? Ask for a private follow-up. It's okay to do that. And if you got a good boss, they're going to respect that. Okay, so those are four things you want, you want to remember what to say. Be brief and concise. Wait your turn. Mind your own business. Ask for a private conversation if you need to. What should you not say? or do during one of these meetings, I have three things. Number one, we talked about it a little bit. Do not throw your coworker under a bus during a status update meeting. Uh, that damages relationships, is not productive, and there are better ways to handle it. Um, and I, I, I mentioned one thing you can do, right, is you try and meet with your coworkers before the meeting to, if, to resolve roadblocks and delays, and if you can't do that, to at least tell your boss that you've talked about it and you've got a plan, right? Uh, don't blame your coworkers. It's just, it's just, it's never a good idea. You don't ever want to do that. Now, I'm not telling you that you can't have a conversation with your coworker or with your boss about the delay, but don't do it in, in front of everybody in the middle of a meeting, right? It looks like you're making excuses and trying to point the finger. Number two, don't throw your people under your bus. In other words, the people that work for you, your subordinates. That is a really shameful habit. I'm amazed at how often people do it. And it, it is the number one thing that damages your reputation uh, for me personally as a, as a boss as, and as a business owner. Like, do not do this. Do, you are responsible for what happens on your team, your, your individual team with your subordinates. Do not, do not come to me in, in, in a meeting environment and blame somebody that works for you for a problem. Um, now it may be that as a team leader and a boss, you and I need to have a conversation about somebody on your team that isn't performing, but a, a status update meeting is not the venue for that, right? When I hear that in a status update meeting, I think to myself, you're making excuses, right? So don't do that. And then that's the last point. Number three, don't make excuses. Own your stuff. I'd much rather have somebody be accountable than make excuses. 
I'll be honest with you. I, I'd rather have somebody say, boss, I dropped the ball on that. I was supposed to get that. I was supposed to get to that last week and I had too much going on and I forgot all about it. Or boss, I was supposed to do that last week. And you know what? I'm just going to be honest with you, man. I was super busy preparing for my Super Bowl party. And I, and I just, I completely forgot that I needed to follow up on that. I'd much rather have that than somebody that says, well, you know, last week you gave me a bunch of stuff to do and I was running around and I'm just overwhelmed and you always do this to me. You always give me too much to do and I just didn't get to it. Hey, I don't want to hear excuses. I don't. Own your stuff. Just own it. Right? I will respect you more if you own your stuff. And chances are your boss will too. All right, so there you go. What to say, what not to say. I have an extra video that actually goes over some examples of bad things to say and good things to say in a meeting. Uh, we're going to put that up on a new Patreon page I've got. So uh, if you enjoy these videos on YouTube and you'd like to support me on Patreon, um, you know, it costs money for the sound and video equipment, the web hosting, and I've got, um, I've hired somebody now uh, to help me edit, uh, edit the videos and put together the video descriptions and the show notes and stuff. So if you want to help me cover some of that cost, you can support me on Patreon. We have some really affordable monthly memberships there. And uh, you can catch that uh, kind of extra extra video that uh, goes over some examples of what, what not to say and what to say in a meeting. So thank you for watching.